Welcome back to the garage. Let's get started with the disassembly of this carburetor. We'll get the float bowls off and uh, get a good idea of what we're in for. I can hear old fuel scale sort of rattling around in the bottom of the bowl, so we'll get those off and see what we're in for. Number one especially is bad. I'm not sure what's in there. Let's have a look. Oh, cheeky. Of course you want to get the float bowls off, have a look inside there, see what you're in for, but I would probably put them back on. Having done this now once, I see a lot of potential for possibly damaging the float. So I mean you have to you have to check the float height anyways, but I mean why create work for yourself? Remove 40 year old leaf hiding in there. So I put the bowls back on after you see this. Some light convincing with that hammer. I want to hit any of this stuff too hard. It's a plastic hammer. I just gave it a couple of bumps. Just want to be super careful with everything. Not too bad in there. I'd say number one was the worst. kind of get an idea of the overall condition of the carburetor. It's dirty, but overall I'd say it's in good shape. i remove this one float. This pin's already loose, I'm just giving it some very light convincing with my small brass hammer. Pull that pin out, start removing the stay plate now. I felt like it wasn't necessary to go into excruciating detail on the disassembly of this carburetor. If you're doing a carburetor project like this, um, just be careful, do your research, be as organized as you can, and if you get stuck, there's always the internet. Number one carburetor is going to come off there pretty easily. It's pretty straightforward, it's not a lot. Linking it to the rest of the carburetor assembly. That stay plate is pressed onto those four pins that you can see along the top through those tabs. Once I got it moving off of those, it came off pretty easily. It's probably never been removed. Let's remove that choke butterfly valve for carburetor number one. We can get that off there. Now it does look like, like somebody spliced into the fuel line for some reason. Be fixing that, replace all of these fuel lines with fresh stuff. So you can see now number one is off there. Now it gets a little bit more complicated. So as far as disassembly goes, really my best advice would be, especially if you've never done it before like me, is just take your time, be careful, just slowly remove everything and take lots of pictures and video if you can. If you feel like I'm bringing you any value with these videos or you're just enjoying watching me take this motorcycle apart, feel free to subscribe or leave a comment down below. I'd like to hear from you. Don't forget to stick around to the end of the video where I show you the project that I've been working on. There will probably be a couple of build videos just for the project uh, itself and it might actually end up becoming its own video series or project series too. So in between carburetor two and number three is where all of your throttle linkage connects to the carburetor. It's basically like this bank of four carburetors is really two pairs of carburetors connected in the middle with linkages. So that's where all the action's at. I'm just undoing all of the clips, holding all those petrified hoses in place, and then removing all of the set screws that are holding those throttle shafts inside the carburetors. Everything has to be loosened and removed all at once. Putting those back together will be interesting.
Here I'm removing, I think, the slow jet. It's pressed in, so you just have to break it free and just coax it out of there. Scratch it up a little bit, but we'll clean that up. I have all of these brass parts soaking in thinner, just trying to break up some of that old gas, but it didn't really seem like it was that bad. A lot of that stuff's going to be replaced, I'm hoping, with the carburetor kit. So the cleanup begins. The original idea was just to clean the carburetor by hand, install a rebuild kit, and get the bike running. And that would determine the course that this project is going to take. You can see I've removed the o-ring and I'm just using the carburetor cleaner and a pick to just remove the last little bits of sealant out of the o-ring groove. When we put this back together and we have our new o-ring in there, last thing we want is a uh, carburetor leaking fuel from all over the place. Last thing you want is leaky balls. Cleaning this thing by hand is going to be a daunting task. I can tell right away, even though that the carburetor is in good condition and pretty clean, that cleaning it by hand and getting it to a level that I'm going to be happy with is, is going to be a lot of work. Also, I'm realizing that I don't really want to clean this, install the rebuild kit, put it all back together without the carburetor basically looking as nice as I want it to. I guess if I figure up, I'm gonna go through all that cleaning that I don't wanna to have to take it apart again. Just inspecting the inside of the throttle body for any scratches or dirt. So you can see, I think that's number three and one carburetor beside each other, the difference. I have a lot of time into that clean carburetor. That's all by hand. So while gathering all the information I needed to start this rebuild project, I discovered that a lot of people have their carburetors vapor blasted when they're rebuilding them. So that started me on the side project of building my own vapor blaster. Not only will I be able to get the car bodies as clean as I want to, but I'll be able to use this process on the rest of the bike as well. Vapor blaster is kind of like sandblasting, except it uses a slurry instead of dry sand. The top portion is made out of Baltic birch, sealed with epoxy paint. The lower part is welded aluminum. My version is super basic. I only just wanted to have the things that I needed to get started getting the results that I wanted right away. Here you can see the pumps on and the slurries being pumped through the nozzle. Uh, I'm about to kick the air on and then you can really see it start to get to work. I'll be doing a more detailed video on the construction of my vapor blasting cabinet so uh, you should definitely check that out. You can see the difference in this photo. The uh, vapor blaster does a really nice job on aluminum. So thanks for watching and be sure to check out the next video, uh, cleaning and reassembly.